findings range from, you know, some of them were remote code execution, or I guess if you look at it in file formats, it'll be local. But you know, if you if share the if you share the file or something, it turns into remote. Or if you can access it through a web browser, it turns into be remote anyways. Uh, and then to denial of service, you know, there was tons of denial of service bugs. wasn't really that big a deal. Well, I guess it is in the state of software, but as a security researcher, you really don't look at denial of service of being high profile unless it's something that takes down like the entire network, but in a SCADA environment, if you, you know, crash the server, that's sort of a big deal. And then integrity lost. Uh, there was some, even uh, some, you know, everybody thinks ActiveX bugs were dead. I even found some ActiveX uh, vulnerabilities uh, related to integrity loss, you know, like overriding files or changing files, deleting files, something like that. So they were interesting, the findings uh, were, but most of them, uh, well, yeah. Half or at least most were uh, led, to, the vulnerabilities led to remote code execution. So it's pretty interesting. And so I've talked through to the demo, and I'm going to, I've kind of um, use a lesser version of Splitware. I didn't, I only included like, there was a slew of vulnerabilities, but I only included one and kind of like removed some information. So because I didn't want anybody to know. So. But, uh, I will demo that now in a virtual machine. If I can, hopefully I won't mess up the screen like we had earlier. Let's see. And the application or the uh, presentation won't crash out of that happening earlier, but so far so good. Um, okay, you guys can see that. Everybody remember right control just in case I forget. Okay, so this is just a um, Windows XP uh, Service Pack 3 box. And just uh, I think this is pretty much default configuration. Now I know that it may be different in other environments, but this is just the, the excuse me, the default. And it's got all patches, all updates and everything current to maybe a week ago when I I made this virtual machine. Um, so the spoilware folder, I've kind of dimmed it, kind of dimmed down it, dumbed it down a little bit, but uh, basically in the folder, let's see, I'll open up the folder and show you guys real quick. All right, so it's just uh, the spoilware program and just the compiled, you know, binary. And then you got pack, the pack folder, which contains all the exploits, in case you want to exploit. So, and there's only one in there. You guys are probably not interested in that anyways, but I'll show you um, the spoilware. You know, it's got the cool little uh, header on it, and then you got dash target for the target. And I'm sure you guys can read, but uh, you know, you can get information about the exploit, run the check, you can run a certain check. And I call them SPIDs, just spoilware IDs, which had a different name before I uh, named it spoilware, but still. Excuse me? Um, I don't know how to do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> what is it? Okay, properties? I'm sorry. I'm, my window skills are not uh, font? Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, <laughs> okay. I'm getting a lesson here myself. Is that, is that going to be appropriate? So glad to have you guys here. You guys are awesome. Okay. You guys, you see that good? Okay. Thank you. I, I'm just, let's, you guys really want me to change the green on black? At least my presentation is going to go maybe the time slot, so that's cool. We can do this. Um, fuck. Yellow. 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 I click yellow, right? That's not. That's not going to be good. <laughs> there you go. 
I, I'm gonna go with green. Are you serious? I like the green because it looks cool, but you guys. All right. Yellow, I guess yellow is better on the reading, so. Well, that's. Okay, so. Um, so, I'll just do a couple functions of it. Like, I'll include one exploit. There's many more than that, but uh, I didn't want anybody to steal my O-Day. So, let's do this. Uh, Fraction one. So, it just, it's all kept in a database, and hopefully I NA'd all the stuff I didn't want anybody to know. Yeah, I think so. But, um, it just, I just put it in a flat file database right now, and it just, you know, prints out status, you know, zero day, vendor names. You know, that's not the real vendor name and product title, but I changed that. Uh, and then you got vulnerability description, just like a brief thing with it, and the revision, you know, if, if you, uh, if I added something onto it, you know, point one, you know, all that. Uh, made a universal, I think I used a, uh, a DLL out of, the, out of the binary that it was included, so easy stuff. But, uh, and it's pretty much 100%, I guess I can say 100% reliable, you know, there's something mess it up, so. And then, let's see. I guess I could just, shit. Excuse me. Um, <laughs> I forgot how to use the up button, so. Um, and then you can just run the check and exploit it. But I've already got the uh, vulnerable daemon running. Daemon, demon, some. And so we're just going to, uh, just going to show the auto pwn feature, which is awesome to me. Like every, I think every exploitation thing or penetration should have auto pwn just for like people. People seem to love that. I don't know. It's odd. It's cool. But uh, yeah, you don't really. Well, I, okay, I'll do the check first because I said it's not really for exploitation, but I mean it is, but it's optional. So I'll do the check first. Shit, I cannot type. Uh, check. So. You can check for a specific one, but I'm just going to check for uh, the first one. So it just goes through, it just runs a simple Windows, checks the registry for it or whatever. Uh, so it's the where demo is installed. Checking it, if it's a remote service, it can check the, um, yeah, it's running on the local host, see if it's accepting connections. I haven't done anything really cool with that, like version checking that much either, but this one really doesn't, this is the one where I just sent like the long character string and it, you know, I got a, I owned it, so it doesn't really have that many information stuff anyways. So my server is listening, so that's that's the check you can go through. And then we can export it. We'll just use auto pun. Local host is, you can do this on any host, but the local host, if you run it as local host, it'll do the local check too. It's got like a little you know if whatever. But uh if you don't it won't execute the local check, so it won't kinda I don't know, that's common sense, but anyways. Uh and hopefully Autopone will work here. So I'll briefly show you the crap. The uh, the payload is it's going to add a user account, and there should be no split account here. Great. So you just see the user and the uh, ASP machine account and the guest. So hopefully that will change very soon. So we're going to autopone, and it just uh, I just it's just. Basically, just runs a Perl script with the exploit, but I kind of I named it dot sp because I thought that was cool, but I don't know if it is. And then uh, payload sent, and where it's an egg hunter, it may take um, a few seconds for it to go, so we'll wait a couple seconds here. But you know, just sends the payload, and then you got a nice little screen that says. In, in the real thing, it says you know the title, of the uh, vendor, and the product, and everything. But in this, you know, I changed everything, so. And it's been a couple seconds. So let's check. Hopefully, we should see. Okay. And we executed the code on the uh, server. And we have a nice little exploit account with the password where. So, yeah, that's, that's the demo of the zero day I had in the uh, server. Thank you. Yeah. 
should have like done some like dramatic music maybe that would have helped i don't know everybody's like hey, should we clap or should we just i don't know it's zero day but i don't i didn't i don't have it so I don't, okay but uh yeah so you can put whatever payload you have i don't currently support more than one right now which like i said it's just a proof of com proof of concept framework and i really haven't done that much dev on it for um probably two or three months except for getting this presentation ready i had to change all the stuff but yeah, I thought it was pretty cool to have my own framework to do that. So it's rock control, right? So rock control. I don't think I have a rock control on this keyboard. Let's use this. Oh, that'll work. Okay. We'll leave it pwned for now. I'll restore it later. Okay. Everybody leaves after the demo, that's cool. <laughs> All right. So, demo, and I guess I had to put a few recommendations here. Um, vendors. I really think you should try to break it before you ship it because, or it'll get broken after you ship it. It's kind of, I don't know. And uh, for the clients, I mean, I think it would be fair to say to do a security evaluation before you make a purchase because lots of the websites have free trials and demos for the uh, for SCADA software. Be surprised how many you could find out there just by, you know, I guess you could call them and tell them you want to request or something, but I guess you'd probably have to be in a company to do that unless you just wanted to. But uh, a lot of it's just free downloads. A lot of it, some SCADA software is just free. I mean, it's probably not that good, but um, um, yeah, a lot of it's got free trials. Like I'll be showing you in a second. So I just wanted to say SCADA software can be just as vulnerable as your typical download.com application. And everybody knows when you want to own something, you go to download.com, download some mom and pop app and own it, which is if you're bored or if you can own something that's, you know, worth it. But whatever. And I just want to show you like a page uh, off the uh, proficiency. Uh, you can get a free trial of the DVD program. Like this is how, you know, you can get the free evaluations. So you can, you know, check the software out before you buy it, you know, for the clients or check it out and, find bugs in it and do presentations or something like that. Um, so, thank you.